who is the founder and owner of the stock swoosh melissa great to have you here with us as always what is your big takeaway from the markets today and what's the biggest impact that we've seen on the market close right now well honestly the market made brand new all-time highs today you cannot fight this market if you are shorting this market I'm, I'm, a lot of people thought it was toppy and even with the sell-up with the virus stuff the market continued to go higher continue to make new highs so you can't short this market if you're in the market for the long haul things look great i said a couple of months ago that the s p could get to 3500 we're almost there i didn't think it would happen this soon we are so close and again, we could get to 3,400 in the S&P, 340 in the SPY, which is the ETF for the market, in the next 10 days. What's taking the market higher, Melissa? Buying. <laughs> it's really just as simple as that. Institutional money is buying the market, and institutional money is not selling any of their positions. And when I say institutional money, I mean hedge funds. I mean, big traders. So they firmly believe and have 100% conviction that Trump is going to get reelected, that the economy is going to stay strong, and that we're going to continue to see fairly good earnings. Uh, how much of a risk is it that we're in this scenario where it seems like there is this blind allegiance to gains right now in the markets where no Iranian missile strike or no impeachment or no coronavirus is enough? to actually add some sensibility back into the equation on the markets? And how much do you think that is something that we should be watching closely for in this blind allegiance to gains and continuing to move the market higher that we're seeing from investors right now? Well, well, I, think what, well I think the thing is a lot of people were kept waiting for a pullback, waiting for a pullback. Now, that's not how I look at entries, but I will tell you that people were waiting for that. And when it didn't come and the market continued higher, now people are not, a lot of people aren't in. A lot of retail traders are not in the market long. So again, what moves stocks, what moves the markets? Big, big, big power money. And so that's what's continued. When you see a stock like Amazon, which moved 287 points up on the earnings, and then, and then it opened at new highs, and then it continued this week. When you see a, a stock, one single stock have a move like that, you say, this is phenomenal. And Tesla too. I've seen extreme moves in stocks this year. And so there's no reason to think that anything would shift this market to great trend. That doesn't mean we're never going to have a sell-off day again. And it doesn't mean that we're not going to ever have anything that people would term a pullback. I hate that term, but that's what people call it. The long story short is, though, that the market is strong. And if you're in, ride it out. If you're not in, you have to pick your entry properly or are you going to miss it? Because a lot of people have missed this rally. Cisco's up right now. Look at this. Look at this. This is exactly what I'm talking about. This is going to lift the market up. We're going to be up tonight. We're going to be up after hours. Cisco is up right now. This is, right. Look at this. We this do have the earnings. Time. Melissa, we yep. should get the results. Uh, we do have the earnings. Um, the estimate was for 76 cents on earnings per share. Uh, the revenue estimate was just shy of $12 billion. Uh, Cisco actually beating by a penny on the bottom line reporting 77 cents versus the 76 cents expected. And we're waiting to get the exact numbers here on the top line. Uh, but the, these are better than expected results from what we can see so far, and the markets like it. Yeah, it looks like revenue came in at $12 billion versus that estimate uh, from Refinitiv of $11.98 billion there. So uh, look, a beat on the top and bottom for this report, uh, Kristen, as you were mentioning. Um, and Melissa, very excited over there. Take us through exactly what the big catalyst was from what you're seeing in Cisco for this most recent quarter. Well, they were concerned. There was muted expectations for this because they were concerned about the virus. So we're seeing what we're going to see where we actually end up closing tonight with this uh, with this report. But I think anything over 50 would be a good buy for this tomorrow. Now it's still moving around. It's wiggling and jiggling in the after hours here. But I would tell you that it didn't have a good report last time around. So I think anything positive, any gap up on this. Will, will be wonderful for the stock and a buying opportunity. But they were concerned about the virus in reference to these earnings. And so far right now, I don't see this. And again, this is a market-related stock. This, this will move the sector. Apple, everything will go and run with this tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday, Friday. We could have a very strong close to the end of this week. And remember, next week's a short week. So to close this market at brand new all-time highs on Friday into a three-day weekend for the market, because the market's closed Monday for President's Day, would be would be fabulous. When you when you look at the the earnings we've had this year, nothing strikes me as horrendous. Even the stocks that didn't do great on earnings 
they weren't like so horrible that they pulled the market down. So I want to get your take, Melissa, here. Is it is it tech that is still fueling this market higher? Absolutely. But I will I will say, though, that don't forget retail. Now, retail hasn't reported yet. That's in a couple of weeks, early March. If we get good earnings in retail, Target, Walmart, again, this is the first week of March these ones come out. Again, no reason to think that the market isn't going to continue higher. I'm, I don't want to be overly optimistic. Again, I'm, never, I'm not going to say we're not going to have a once-off or a shakeout, but that would actually be good for the market. If we had like a one-day sell-off or something like that, it would actually be good for the market because it would bring in more buyers. But the long-term buying, institutional money, it's in the market, and it doesn't go in and out in a second. So when it's in, it's in, and it's in full throttle, and we're seeing that. And these, there's certain numbers, and again, this, this 350 number in the SPY, 235 in the Qs, 240 in the QQQs, these are real numbers. And again, you have machines trading the market. These are targets. These are numbers. These numbers look like they're going to be hit. And so right now, if we're diving into some of the numbers around Cisco, and particularly looking through the report here, um, they're actually guiding for Q3 revenue of about a decline of one and a half to three and a half percent uh, decline year over year, um, and earnings per share coming in uh, at an expectation, a range of about 62 to 67 cents. How does that line up with what you were expecting, and should we expect something similar from other players in the same space as Cisco? Well, NTAP was supposed to report tonight, too. Let me quickly look and see if that reported, because that's in a similar sector. No, that's what? down. That's down right now. But, I mean, getting back to Cisco, I think because the earnings were so poor the last quarter that any, any, any positive news was going to create a lift up in the stock. It's kind of been basing out in this area between 45 and 50 for the last couple of months. And, and when you have the market making brand new all-time highs and you don't have certain stocks doing that, like Cisco is not at the high, you say, why? What's going on with this? What's the problem? So again, you got to get the lift in this. You got to get a lift up tomorrow. It's holding over 50. This looks great, but NTAP is down. I don't know why that's down, but that's in that sector and that's down too. So that's not great. But overall, yeah. I would say Cisco, it, Cisco needed to do it this quarter. Again, because the expectations were low, mm -hmm. I think that's what's helping this move up. You and know so what I'm saying? Add some good news. And Melissa, just while we have you briefly, are we in a scenario where we could see companies that perhaps are telling investors when they report earnings that there is not as much of an impact on their business due to the coronavirus that we see the stock rally even more off of relief, even if the numbers don't come in quite in line with what they're expecting on the outlook? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of times you wonder and you say, well, are they using this as an excuse? I don't know. But the long story short of it is, remember, <coughs> I don't think they've reopened them yet in China. Once that happens, I think we're supposed to be the 10th, and they moved it to the 13th. Now I think it's the 15th. That could create a lift up in Apple. Maybe it's an excuse. Maybe it's reality. I don't think they have a handle on how many people worldwide actually have the virus. And I know that they're working on it. They're, they're trying to find ways to prevent it from spreading, but I think it's a shame that it happened. And and it was a terrible situation with that doctor dying, the one that found out about it. Horrible, right. horrible story. Um, you know, but I lower. think that they don't really don't know how many people have it. And so you've seen some you've seen the airlines taking a hit. You've seen some retail taking a hit. This is lucky that this isn't taking a hit. Once the Apple stores reopen, I think that the market will feel a lot better about that. Whether it's going to be this the end of this week or into next week, I don't know. But if it is into next week, that is probably going to create a rally. All right, Melissa Arma, founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. Melissa, great to see you. Thank you. Have a good day.